is Christina. Welcome to Ibnada's Talk Show. Today we join with our first guest, Ade Aluku and Bukola Kiki Jolubo. Hello, how are you? Hi, thanks for having Hi. me. I'm fine, thank you. So you're Ade Aluku, you're a stand-up comedian. Yes, I And am. a survivor of, um, what's it called, warrior. Sickle cell warrior. Sickle cell warrior. Yes. And Bukola Jolubo. Jolubo. Yes. I am uh, the founder of Jush's Army and the host on Idiot with Kiki as well. Okay, thanks for coming to the show. You're, welcome. You're looking very beautiful. Thank you, it's just me like me you. Are. <laughs> you're funny, but you're okay. We're good. We're good. You're looking We're good. Oh, thank you. I love African friends, man. Thank you. Okay, so I'll start with you, uh, Bukola. Can you yeah. tell us about... Um, so, Joshua Zami. Yeah, Joshua Zami. You're the founder. What is yeah. it about? Well, Joshua Zami is uh, a non-governmental organization where we mean, so boys, our vision in Joshua Zami is to raise men of vision, men of purpose, and men of value. So basically, our focus is on the young boys to be able to teach them and raise them in a way that they understand what purpose is and have visions for their lives. And then to be able to channel their strengths to the right direction. Mm -hmm. So basically our focus is on boys. And then we, we, we work with men as well and their fathers, who are fathers basically. Our boys are there and we need mentors for them. And the best person to mentor the child is a father or a man. Mm -hmm. The best person to mentor a boy is a man. So Jushizami is all about boys and men. Yeah. So what so inspired Jushizami? What inspired Jushizami? Well, I grew up loving boys. Uh, there's a popular oh. joke I make about myself that I didn't have a bridal shower because I didn't have girlfriends to be there. So... Oh. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, I kind of grew up loving um, boys and I had boyfriends. So more of your friends are boys? Are boys, kind of. And, you know, and growing up, after I got married, I, well, before I got married, I used to pray that I want four boys. I've got two sons, thankfully, oh. yes, two <laughs> amazing boys. And they're teenagers now. So I used to pray that I wanted boys, all sons. And then growing up and seeing the way boys are living, you know, on the streets, not identifying who they are. And then again, I can see this hurts me so much that I feel mm -hmm. our men are being pushed to the back burner. Mm -hmm. No one listens to the man anymore. And there's a lot that is hidden inside of them. Mm -hmm. So my passion is to be able to, you know, reach out to men, get them to be able to say, speak up and then pay mm -hmm. attention to raising our boys in a godly manner and in a purposeful manner such mm -hmm. that our boys are strong in who they are, they know who they are mm -hmm. and they are confident about who they are basically. So that's the drive. Maybe you could also add that the drive is because I've got two sons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have brothers? I've got two brothers. Wow. I come from a family of five and um, three girls, two brothers. So I think that was where the inspiration actually came from, your brothers trying to put them in the right path. Well, maybe I've got an older brother and a younger brother, and they're very they've got strong personalities like myself, so I couldn't have put them in the right path. <laughs> but again, my dad as well was a very strong man, and my dad was somebody who, who loves to see teenagers empowered in his own way then when we were growing up. He loves to see teenagers work purposefully. Mm -hmm. I'm using the word purpose a lot because I learned that from my dad. You have to have a purpose. Yeah. You have to have something you are aiming for in okay. life so that's you know that kind of inspired me as well i would say okay so what plans have you got for the year oh big plans my hands are always full mm -hmm. <laughs> tell us about it <laughs> okay on joshua dami platform um annually we have what we call the leadership boot camp for boys and the leadership boot camp they teach us they teach us book, academics, mathematics in school. The boot camp is basically teach, teaching um, leadership qualities to boys, and we run that every year. Okay. And then on a monthly basis, we, I run what we call um, the master class for the boys, Boys for Real master class. It's online based and kind of bring people like our day who are men and experienced, you know, to talk to the boys online, a group of boys, we've got a group of boys online that they just talk to, they mentor them on different topics from identity to etiquette to relationship to vision to planning, you know, stuff like that basically. And the big one that I always look forward to happens every first, every first um, Saturday of December 
It's called Dada Nigeria. Okay. It's a dinner, a black tie dinner so for can fathers people and people. So why people to be part of this? Um, Dada Nigeria or Joshua's Army. Um, our website is www.joshuasarmy.co.uk and we're on social media as Joshua's Army. Just the, instead of a and a Y, it's I E. Okay. Thank you, Bukola. Thank Come you. back to you. <laughs> Ade Aluko. Hmm, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you pronounce that. Tell us your experience living with sickle cell. Well, sickle cell is something that's uh, been input onto me, uh, blessed to me uh, from childhood, from very birth, from childhood, from when I was a baby. But I didn't really have my first crisis until I was about six years old. Then that's wow. when I got my, uh, my taste of what sickle cell is all about. So tell us about that experience. So sickle cell, basically what it is, is a blood disorder um, that causes an hemoglobin to form a sickle shell, a sickle, sickle shape mm -hmm. cell that blocks oxygen that goes through your body, uh, bloody vein. And when that is blocked, you get excruciating pain in your body all over whatever is happening. And my first experience was back in Nigeria, and then we didn't really have hospitals like they have in the UK over mm -hmm. here. So I was washing dishes in the back and uh, normally as kids and I was bending down like you know when you bend down and I was everything was fine washing the dishes as, but when I want to stand up I couldn't stand up so they had to come and carry me because the pain was too much. So they carry me in that bending position onto a bed and they try to straighten my leg. That's the best that's the that's the Hardest pain I've ever what felt. What age were you life. then? Around six years old. And I will never forget that um, experience in my life because he, he, he put a mark in, my, in, my, in myself that, oh. yeah, you're going to be going through this for the rest of your life. So, and growing up in Nigeria, we didn't have the means like being rich. Mm -hmm. So we have to live on herbal medicine. So instead of surviving with crisis, um, Normally, when I'm in the hospital over here in the UK, if I go to the hospital, I can come out of the hospital a week. But back in Nigeria, because we have other medicine to, to, to do that, my pain will last for three weeks. So when I'm, when I'm saying I'm in pain, I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't do any sports with my friends, I can't even go out anywhere. I have to be in hospital bed. And I'm grateful today because I'm a tes uh, testimony. I've, I mean, I still live through it, but you can't see it in my face. No. You understand? So I'm very grateful for that. And also, this month, June 19, is the uh, Sickle Cell Day. Uh, thank you for bringing me on television to come and share my experience about it. And yeah, so as usual, we're doing a raising awareness with the Sickle Cell Society. Okay. There's a church service that we normally do every year to pray for all the warriors out there that are suffering and going through stuff, you know. So, yeah, um, sickle cell is uh, it's part of my life. Um, if they said they, uh, they, everybody's always asking me the question, like, if there is a cure, would mm -hmm. I take it? I would say no, because... Um, so you're on, like, everyday medication, you know? Just every day, everyday medication. If you look at my... So the uh, medication reduces the pain? Yes. Uh, the risk of having that pain? Yes. Uh, like, not now, because this year, my plan is that I don't want to see hospital this year. And thank God, it's been going fine. So I've been on my medication as regularly, um, taking my, um, my erythromycin, which is like an infection, to fight infection in my mm -hmm. body, and my painkillers, which is ibuprofen. So once you take stuff, those medication, you're fine? I'm fine. Every time before I leave the house in the morning, I take it and I... I go so, but in Nigeria, it was worse because they didn't have those medication. They did, but it was expensive. Okay. And my family was not born with gold spoon. <laughs> you understand? We were born with a uh, silver one. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and also, your uh, stand-up comedian. Tell yes. us how you managed to combine the two. Being a well, comedy is a way of me um, taking away because as a sickle cell warrior, we have this tendency to all this have it in our mind that, oh, we can never make something out of ourselves, or oh, when is this oh. crisis going to come, or oh, I'm going to be sick next week, my people don't like, my friends don't like me, they don't want to be around me. So comedy is a way for me to take that out of my mind, because one of the things that I've, God has actually shown me to mm -hmm. do is, if I think about 
me being sick, I will be sick. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. But if I think like, okay, mm -hmm. this time that I'm using to think about being sick, why don't you think of a comedy stuff? Write stuff down that's funny. Yeah. Make me laugh. So I turn, basically, basically what I did was turn my pain into laughter. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's good. instead of me dwelling in it yeah depressing like oh i can't do anything i just make the fun out of it and so when did you actually find your love for being a comedian when will actually inspire you because being a sickle cell is quite huge yes too yeah, yeah. you understand so I how know, did you manage i know um after i finish because normally people make fun of me in class when i was younger mm -hmm. the, of the way i look uh, as this when this is not the way i look as a teenager when I said I look very, <laughs> I had a big teeth that was out like this. Oh. My stomach was really out. I had yellow eyes in secondary school. So people were always making fun of me. So I think I turned that making fun into strength. Mm. So like I just laugh out, out, out of it. Oh. So I used that to get into the comedy industry. And because people love my accent as well, my Nigerian accent and all my Nigerian stories, mm -hmm. Uh, it, takes, it took me to a lot of places, and I'm very grateful that I actually found a way to take sickle cell off my mind and mm -hmm. put. Uh, and did not take laughter. the things people say to you it, too seriously. It make it worse. Yeah, so, yeah. Because some kids would just be depressed. Yeah. You see? So there, that was really still, good. There's still a lot of people that still go through it right now mm -hmm. that they need to find a way to it. And my advice to you out there is just find something to take away that depression mm -hmm. uh, uh, they don't like me if you like music start playing music if you like writing start writing mm -hmm. if you like poems start writing poems and trust me that will take your mind off it it will take it i know it hurts it hurts but when you take that mind take that thing off your mind you'll live free and you'll be fine okay um we we'll have a topic okay. today and our topic is our transgender women competing in women's sports see on an unfairly advantage or should they be allowed to compete? Um, well, my English uh, level didn't go past that in dictionary school. Can you tell me what a transgender <laughs> is? I just want to know. <laughs> yeah, we're not here for comedy. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> we're not here for comedy, come okay. on, serious. We haven't got time on your side. Well, so basically, there are men that dress as women. No, they change. They, they change, change, change themselves mm -hmm. to women. They change their. But that's you're still a man if you change yourself into a woman. That means you still got that agility to be stronger. Not stronger than women. Women are strong. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But you had that agility to be faster than them mm -hmm. in what, as, as a man. As like if you put a man and a woman in a place and say, run this race. Mm -hmm. You uh, sometimes course, yeah. you find women that can run, my well, like my wife. Men. She runs faster, <laughs> but well, yeah, I, most naturally the yeah. strength is with the man, it's and that's why I would say that. For me, I think it's unfair. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the question just goes with you asking me, is it fair for a transgender man to go through labor? Mm -hmm. like, a, a, a woman has been built yeah. to be able to take that pain. Yeah. No matter the drug you take as a man, I don't see a man being able to go through that kind okay. of pain. No. So you now going to say that I am taking drugs to reduce some hormones in me, so I'm becoming a woman. There is that natural Man thing that's thing. still that is still there. That's still some there. people believe that yes, they were born in the wrong body. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that, but that wrong body came with something mm -hmm. specific to that gender that you were yeah. born in. So for me, I think it's unfair. it's unfair. Okay, so do you agree? Yeah, I agree. It's unfair too. Okay, thanks for your <laughs> view. Your question. <laughs> <laughs> so just before we go, mm -hmm. can you tell the viewers at the where they can find you and any updates? And yeah, um, basically, um, my socials, Africans do everything. That's Africans. To book you for comedy. Yes, Africans do everything at gmail.com. Uh, my social media is Africans do everything. And if you are getting married and you're looking for MC for your, <laughs> for your event, hello, I'm here to help you. Bukala? 
Yes, before I go into that, I just want to commend Ade for what you do. Well done, a big well done to you. I've got two siblings who mm -hmm. are sickle cell. Unfortunately, we lost one of them oh. in um, about 11 years ago, and the other one is still fighting, and she's a warrior. I would say she's a mother of two now. Wow. Yeah, and she's doing very well. And well done, Ade. Thank you. Very and one thing, we're talking about drugs. One thing my, my, well, my, what my siblings used to do then is take a lot of water. Yeah. It does help. A lot okay. of water, that helps. So now back to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, our website is www.joshazami.co.uk and um, I'd like to invite all fathers, please save the date, 7th of December 2019, Adad and Idina. It's usually awesome. You can find us on Facebook, Joshazami with an IE. And look through the pictures. The boys look forward to it. In fact, my own men at home look forward to it as okay, well. Okay, Bukola. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, um, thanks, thanks for having you guys on the show. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Ade, for coming to speak up. Yeah. We'll go for a quick break. And then when we come back, we'll be joined by our last guest, Avinko, who's the artist who's going to perform to end the show. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Minada Stock Show. We're joined with our last guest, Avinko, an artist who is going to perform to end the show. How are you, Avinko? Fine, fine. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm, so, glad, I'm glad to be here. Oh, thanks for coming. Thank you very so much. So tell us about your music, your type of music, and how would you describe yourself and your okay, I, I style make, of singing? I make um, rap for beat uh, music, which is um, rap. Um, infused with Afro beats. I know a lot of people call it Afro rap, but I think Afro rap is when you're like rapping in like a language, an African language, you know. But when it comes to reading, applying poetry, which is what rap means, you know, it, it the the primary language is English, so that's why I put the rap before the Afro beat. So it's rap with artists. I created the name, you know. So, but I, I want them to put put that up there in, on iTunes and everything. Rap will be as a genre, you know, because we need, we need, we have something to say. We have, we definitely have something to say. Okay, so tell us about the song you'll be performing today. Uh, I'll be performing low. I featured um, uh, an artist, a UK-based artist called Kemi as well. Okay. She's UK-born and all that. So we just did the video um, recently, you know, although right now she's, mm -hmm. she's kind of like, upset me because the last thing we did i took her into the hood because mm -hmm. there's this beautiful artwork there's an african artwork so i'm like oh let's go shoot it mm -hmm. so when we went there she saw like a lot of guys and all that she was like why am i bringing her here i mm -hmm. said no what we came here for for the artwork you know so we kind of had the back and forth you know i, I apologize to her but i guess it's just part of being a boss and running your mm -hmm. your business you know so what inspired the song and what's the name of the song? It's called Low. It's, it's a, it's a da you know, like Nigerian music is all about party life. You know, when, when the West Coast, um, East Coast did that, it was all about the um, metaphors and all that. When the West Coast in America, I'm talking about America, when they did that, it was all about the gangster rap and all that. The South, they do um, like the diamonds, they talk about the diamonds. So when it's coming to Africa, UK, they have what they talk about. When it comes to Africa, we talk about the party life, happy mm -hmm. life, and that's what, that's what I represent. Avinko means a very intelligent, nice, cool, oh my boy. You see what I've got here? I've got my... Um, my clothing line in provided t shirts okay. and I'm I definitely you're gonna get one, you oh, know. Thank so you. so yeah, so that that's why I represent trying to inspire the young ones to support each other, come together, mm -hmm. support black business owners. Mm -hmm. I'm all about that, you know. So, and respect women and children. Respect the women and children. Stop leaving these women with babies out there, you know, to fend for themselves. I don't like that. You can't be my friend if you're on that route. Wow. <laughs> So tell us what actually inspired the song. Is that what inspired the song? I mean, the, just like I said, Nigerian music is the vibe we give in Nigeria is the party life, making people happy. Okay. So you when know, you're so writing, so just that party life, um, low, go down, low, 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 make you put up your dancing shoes. It's just a party song, you know. So it so, was the party life that inspired the but, song. But, but what really inspired the song is is Kemi's talent. You know, the girl I featured, her talent. Mm -hmm. She's she's very she's a very good vocalist. A lot of things inspired it. I'm an artist, you know, so I can't. <laughs> really put my mind on something but she's talented so just wanting to like you know see what we sound like together yeah that's that's the inspiration like all these things okay. I, the, am I, 
Is yeah, that okay? Yeah, yeah that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So what plans have you got for the year? Anything happening? Soon? I have a show tonight. It's called uh, All Black Event. It's at Mystic Lounge. Anyone who's out there, um, make sure you you try and come and show your love and support. Hear my new single Low and watch me perform and you know come have fun tonight, Friday night. You know what else is there to go than to come out to the club? So Mystic Nightclub on Old Kerf Road is popularly known as KFC. That's the street name. So try and be there tonight, okay? Okay, just before we go, can you tell the viewers where they can get your song and follow you up? I'm right? releasing my EP soon called Love and Rap Fro Beat. It's just to shine light on the name Rap Fro Beat. Like I explained to this beautiful lady here, I'm I'm releasing an EP called Love and Rap Fro Beat. We come from love and hip hop, you know. So I, I'm saying love and rap Fro Beat. So uh, it's gonna be released on iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, and um, I think Amazon. Let me just say all platforms. Just support me, so you know, like show me love and support you hear my music it's gonna have five tracks um low where can they find you on social media just to get all the updates okay instagram facebook avinko 452 follow me on avinko 452 instagram okay. facebook twitter and every other um, platform avinko a-v-i-n-c-o 452 thank you avinko yeah. it was nice having you on the show thank you very much this is all we have for you today avinko is going to perform its single to end the show and we hope you enjoy the performance. Until next time, bye for now. Make you put up a dancing shoes. Oh, make you dance like say you know so so Make you put up a dancing shoes. Make you dance like say you know so Make me go down low, 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 low. Go down low, 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 low. Money down low, then bring it up halfway. Then over till you can't see my face. Rocking ones to the front, two steps to the right. Hey, you drink your shot, gonna make my mood tonight. Make way, make way. It's the eye of the tiger. Make way, make way. Straight in my eyeline. Take pride cause I am a liar Dress like you're trying to make it rain Baby I said fire to the dance floor Call me the queen of the beat Bow down to me if you wanna see more Make you put up your dancing shoes Oh Make you dance like say you know so So Make you put up your dancing shoes yeah. Make you dance like say you know so Girl, make we go down low like a submarine. We go low with the flow, let me low. Got two questions, can I grow? Are you feeling so long like a rope? Tease me, tease me till I lose control. Shark and them more implies so I go. On more L, I buy control. Fiji land, say my mind paro. Yeah, and every little thing that we do. Yeah, she just be between me and boo. Yeah, but since say the dance floor full. Yeah, we don't give a ish about. So what you gonna do if you really don't wanna dance? Get your ass low on the floor? Of course you watch that wallet drop? She's on the low saying hi, what's up? Make you put up your dancing shoes Oh, make you dance like say you know so so Make you put up your dancing shoes yeah. Make you dance like say you know so Make me go down low, low Feel the beat, be the groove. Don't tell me with your words. Show me with your moves. Remember the dance for her dear first. Feel the beat, be the groove. Don't tell me with your words. Show me with your moves. Remember the dance for her dear first. Make you put up your dancing shoes. Make you dance like say you know so so Make you put up your dancing shoes. Yeah. 